If you ever struggled with getting a mix loud, the chances are that you have some sort of low-end buildup issue that's holding your mix back. In this clip, Jens discusses how to use the tom to duck the low end of the bass by using Waves C6. Check it out and enjoy. In addition to that, or maybe only, could be to use the DI only to bring back the um, amp tracks treble and string, string sound, like if you would have a, a DI or something. And then I would do it like this. Maybe also some high cuts to sort of get away with any weird hiss. And then I would mix that back in. At various degrees, um, usually I would put something on here as well. Uh, sometimes it would be like a devil lock compressor, uh, the Sound Toy one. If you haven't tried it, try it. I am gonna try it here later. Uh, or just like an L1 limiter. For that to even be activated, I need to crank the output a little bit from, from the EQ. And then you can tailor to, to taste uh, how much of the very highs you want here, or um, if any, or even go down a little bit. point about this is to make the bass sound like there's this like high-end string like going from old to newer strings basically again even though it's uh, the core sound is, is amped in a similar way you could also do with the sub if you need to revitalize the low end in your amped sound now this usually works um, if you just do like this in the high end it usually works without aligning them uh, i'm not sure how well these are aligned at the moment seem to be okay if i were to align them i would use something like auto line from sound radix to uh, figure out how many samples they are uh, in relation off in relation to each other and if i need to phase shift and uh, then it would be solid enough to also use in the low end uh, without any big compromises uh, that's a good trick the next thing that usually sits on my bass thing here, by the way, now we're using that feed that goes into the drum bus. It's not uncommon that I put some sort of, um, first I might have an EQ here in case I need to do anything in terms of maybe low cutting or um, overall sensation. And then sometimes I would be using something like a C6 with sidechain. I think I have a preset here, C6 low key. If I feed this one with toms, select a bus, C6 low key, and let's feed the or send, keep saying feed, it's just because I'm so hungry. I just ate. Let's see, C6 Loki, pre-fader action. This could also be the same issue here with the timing, but it's not so crucial uh, when it comes to, to this process. Uh, what I'm doing here is that as soon as there is a, a tom fill, it's usually like a crucial point for mastering distortion. Solos and uh, tom fills, it's these like typical things where you go and chase if you do a CD master and uh, you're still trying to win the loudness war or the client wants it louder and you realize that well fuck it, it's you know distorting on all the tom hits or whatever and then you either have to live with that uh, try to clean it or you could try to already while mixing think about this for example i usually drop both volumes and rhythm guitars a little bit during solos trying to keep the energy level in uh, sort of even throughout the song when it comes to um, tom hits i usually do this i have some sort of process that would take out some low end uh, from the bass uh, usually not duck the whole bass i mean i could send this to the ducker i suppose but i usually prefer doing it frequency specific where the toms live and the, where they take the energy i would sort of again steal low end from the bass by putting it away so there's more place for the toms and the overall energy buildup doesn't become too uh, excessive during tom fills let's try that 
there's not so many toms in here. Well, I guess there are a few. Well, of course there are no tom fills in the course. <laughs> Let's fake it. Let's uh, copy some toms to the course. Improve the arrangement. So basically now, if you would listen to the uh, to the bass here, and then we have the uh, C6. And then those toms will trigger that band that I have here. It's this band, this one here, one of the sidechain bands. You cannot sidechain anything here. Yeah, actually you can, nothing. That's two extra bands that I use for sidechaining. So if we would listen to the toms completely randomly copied now, see that that triggered this um, C6. And uh, that leaves more low end for the rest. At the same time, I can use the rest of the bands in the C6 to uh, tailor the frequencies a little bit. For example, uh, perhaps do what I have now, this band. Shaving a little bit of the low end notes to make them a little bit more even. And sometimes I do this, I take another band, uh, shelving from maybe one and a half, 2K. And I crank it, use it like a shelving EQ for the bass to get it forward more, the, um, the strings and the um, distortion. But then I compensate it at the same time with the, um, with the compression of this band. So uh, the perceived treble and distortion of the bass comes forward, but it's also tamed at the same time with the same process. So three, a three, three piece um, process by using the C6 on the uh, master uh, on the bass bus. The C6 is a dangerous thing, same as the C4. It rotates face at these cross uh, crossover frequencies. You have to make sure that it's actually beneficial for the track. Sometimes you need to compensate with uh, uh, maybe a face uh, polarity shift 180 degrees on the bass track or uh, a low cut somewhere to create that same uh, effect. Yeah, bass is uh, tricky. Sometimes it's just better. Like, you know, put the C6 on, that face shift serves the track. Let's try. Right. Yeah, that seemed to make no big issues at least. 